welcome to uh, this week's tech tip for 45 drives. Uh, my name's Doug Milburn. I am vice president and co-founder of 45 drives. And every now and then, uh, the good people here, Nicole and Chris, let me uh, do a tech tip. So I uh, hope I'm gonna say something of interest to you. So today, what I wanna talk about, well, I've got Kim here and, and she's gonna talk about a personal experience that's also a company experience that happened and it happens to be with CryptoLocker and, and cybersecurity. So it's sort of a cyber, cybersecurity theme on the introduction and the, the, the billing of this tech tip video. But it goes deeper than that. This really is relevant to any threat to your data as an operating organization, uh, and you have all your operational data your, the, the, that's mission critical to you. And uh, there are numerous threats to it, and the breadth of this thing as you listen to it. Uh, Kim's here for a human face on one particular threat, but all these threats are relevant to this story. So today's topic, uh, cybersecurity, uh, something that's close to us all in this day and age and a lot of awareness in it. And uh, I want to talk about, and, and in particular, what I want to talk about is for organizations that have uh, a typical company-sized data sets. Okay. Uh, and uh, what's that mean? That's really, really broad, but I'm not talking about you know, a whole bunch of our customers that have huge data sets, but I'm talking more ordinary uh, you know, company. We're a company of 275 people. Uh, we have a data set that's around 22 terabytes, which is not all that big in terms of data size, but we have a very, very large number of files. And they're also incredibly critical to the operation of our organization. We lose that data would be absolutely disastrous. Okay. So let's take that into the age of cybersecurity and uh, you know, and threats from external. We've always been aware of threats like the server dying or hard drives dying, but now we have a threat of uh, people on the outside. So just for fun today, with me I have a special guest. So this is Kim Thistle. Kim Thistle uh, is our director of HR. So she runs the HR department that looks after our 275 employees and keeps them all happy. And, uh, and I've known Kim for a long, long time. Kim and I were neighbors uh, way, way back. So uh, anyway, and Kim has very kindly offered to come in and talk about something a little bit embarrassing. Hey, Kim. Just a little bit, a little bit embarrassing. Huh. Yeah. So, um, and uh, it, and so we're going to tell you a little story, and, and we're just going to tell you this for fun. And again, I, I really appreciate Kim coming in. And I have to say, Kim, you know, is a little embarrassed to talk about this, and I'm embarrassed too. So this is a cybersecurity problem that we had a number of years ago, and uh, we had uh, Crypto Locker came and visited our company, and I, I just asked Kim to come in here, just talk about how really innocuous. And Kim's somebody who's incredibly comp competent runs her department extremely well, is extremely diligent, and she was the person that was the center of us getting uh, getting stung, which was... Absolutely, it was me, yes. And, yes. and, and how's it feel? It feels, um, if I could summarize it, eight years later I still, what I, I have what I describe as PTSD over the whole thing. So uh, it felt incredibly scary um, is the best way I could describe it. The thought that I had perhaps shut the whole company down was, was terrifying. Um, on a scale of one to 10 of, of feeling afraid and scared of what I might have done, it was a 10. So it had all this impact on you. And, and yeah, we go back, actually, I think it was 2013. It was 2021 right now. So that's, uh, yeah, that, that, that's a long time ago, isn't it? Yes. And every now and then I still have the thought, oh my gosh, did I open an email that was a bad email that could possibly uh, have the same impact. So yeah, let's talk a little about how this happened. Somebody had left the company Yes. in, in close to your department. Yes, mm -hmm. very close. And you were covering her work. Yes. And there was an email that had an attachment to it that said it was a voice message from this person. 
this person's name. And without thinking, going through a lot of emails, I clicked on it. Uh, nothing happened that day. It was the next day. So in noting, and as we think about cybersecurity, uh, we don't move voicemails around by email in our company and never have. That's right. So, mm -hmm. but uh, fair to say it was the stress, the situation of being overworked at the time, you know, sudden blast of work coming on there that. Yeah, and yeah, moving too quickly and not paying enough attention and not thinking and flying through a lot of emails. Grave mistake, grave mistake. So it's that easy. So you opened up this attachment and what did you do after you opened the attachment? Uh, so I saw the email, uh, I clicked on it, the message that was there was not relevant, so I simply moved on to the next, the next task. So do you remember a long time ago, but do you remember how long it took before you realized that anything was amiss? The next day. And, and, and what did you, do you remember what you have? Yeah, I remember the next day, yeah. so I came into my office and our president and our IT uh, wizard um, we're both sitting in my office and at that point I did not know what was up but I knew something was up and then crypto locker was buzzing away and uh, yes locking a bunch of stuff uh, around our network on one particular our main file server yes yeah. Yeah. yeah everything every file or folder that we opened was uh, garbly goop yeah. crypto locked crypto locked and a, 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 a bit of a nightmare. And uh, it's really interesting, you look back on this, and you go, you, all you do is open an email, and, and that was it, had an attachment, it. had a relatively relevant subject line, classic story. Oh. Quite frightening. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I know, I'm, I'm gonna jump back uh, and on this little episode, and uh, what happened was we looked at it and said, well, how do we get back from that? Do we pay the ransom? Or do we, uh, and, and, and not knowing whether you're actually gonna get your files back if you pay a ransom or not, and uh, or do we try to rebuild from backups? And you know we're a company that does storage, and uh, and so we had backups, and uh, we were able to get the vast majority of things back uh, back from backup. So thankfully, was, uh, yeah, yes. and and uh, mm -hmm. just left with poor Kim being traumatized. <laughs> so, at that point. True. <laughs> and uh, today we're, uh, we're, we're we've moved along a lot. You know, you wake up on that, and we're uh, now NIST 800-171A uh, uh, compliant, and moving beyond that uh, to next level of standards on it. And we do training on the, the whole phishing thing. We actually have an external company, and I wish I knew the name because they're great, and they have an internal training system where they send out phishing-like emails, uh, you know, to train our people to be aware all the time about it. So. We're feeling better about cybersecurity, but you can never guarantee that you will never, ever, ever run into a problem like that. So we talk about crypto locker just because the uh, fun to reminisce. I think a little bit healing for you, Kim, to talk about this. Sure. Uh, so. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, there, there's a role. What got us out of that was storage and good use of backup. So I just want to, in the next part of this video, I just want to talk about uh, about the role of storage and how we insulate ourselves now on storage but, and from those kind of threats. What I want to talk about is how we insulate ourselves to a, a very, very high degree by using uh, the features of our storage system. So you've heard of our story of CryptoLocker, but look, CryptoLocker, this is one story just to make it a little more human, just the impact of data loss when it happens. And the goal for our organization is to be able to come back from data loss events and just I ideally without skipping a beat. Okay, so let me talk to you about where we've gone since then in storage infrastructure. And a bunch of other things that we talked about. We did, uh, you know, uh, our whole cybersecurity program and everything to reduce the threat, but you can't eliminate it. So storage helps you be ready to deal with the threat should it bite you. So uh, we are a company, so we're in presently in three, distributed across three buildings. So 275 people, about 200 computers. Uh, there are a whole bunch of other connected, another 150 connected devices on that, like job control pods and things in our manufacturing. Um, and uh, so 
this whole network that spans three buildings, uh, you know, storage is, is one of the, the foundational pieces in that. Our storage is done in a Ceph cluster. When we started moving to the world of Ceph clustering, one of the first things we did is we moved ourselves onto a Ceph cluster. Now, you could argue, I said 22 terabytes of data now, uh, a big chunk of that video stuff, uh, a lot of small files. We absolutely don't need a cluster for size. But here's what we've done with it. So we have a four node Ceph cluster, two replica cluster, uh, and we have about 80 terabytes of usual usable space. Uh, 22 terabytes of company data. And so what we do is we rely really heavily on snapshotting. For anybody who doesn't know what snapshotting is, what snapshotting is, is capturing your, uh, your, your file tree as it stood at the moment you snapshotted it. Right. and also preserving all the blocks that were relevant to that file tree at that moment. Right. Here's the beauty of snapshotting. Two beautiful things about it. Number one is it's almost instant. Uh, there is no gathering stuff up and writing it out. It's really just copying that file tree. Uh, and the cost in terms of storage space is not very large. Uh, all you need to do in terms of excess storage, uh, extra storage space for a snapshot, rather than copying everything over again, you're just taking any blocks that would have been released back to the file system as unused blocks need to be reserved because you need to keep the content. If you've got to call on that old file table to get files back, uh, then those blocks have to be there. But it's pretty darn efficient. So what we do on it is we snapshot on an hourly basis. Okay, so if CryptoLocker happened and it plugged away and it started to take out files like slowly and steadily, the moment it gets noticed, uh, we can go back and you know the odds are with hourly snapshots that we can go back and we can pull back files at any time. that would have been changed and locked at some moment. I just need to go back to the hour before that happened and I've got a copy of the file. So if it's a file that's getting used right now, I mean, if it was, you know, if it had just been locked, you're not using it. You just found out that something is amiss. You can go and you can stop the whole process, and then you can, uh, and then you can start uh, start winding yourself back. But with hourly snapshots, uh, we are highly protected on it. So our scheme, we do uh, hourly snapshots, uh, 24 of them on a rotating basis. We do daily snapshots, seven days rotating basis, and right now we do weekly snapshots as well. And uh, we go back uh, four weeks and rotate through it. Uh, that is also complemented by taking all of our data and writing it using our sync and having a more conventional backup scheme where we get off the cluster onto a separate machine that's physically remote from that and uh, which the, the, those backup uh, data sets also go off site. So we are very, very heavily backed up. And the, the R-Sync thing, R-Sync is slow and you know, resource intensive, but uh, it, 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 it complements snapshotting at that point. If anything ever went awry, you always know you have real hard physical data sets, uh, backup data sets. So that's what we do. It's pretty conservative. Uh, it worked incredibly well for us through the, the, the crypto locker era. I'm also, let me do a teaser. We got another video gonna come up. We're gonna interview our people. We are going to do a next revision of our stuff, Ceph storage cluster to take advantage of our buildings. We have a fourth building coming on. And what we wanna do is we wanna to get to a point where we can lose any building off of our network and still be up and running uh, the whole time. Not, not miss beat other than the building that, that, that goes down. So that's coming up. So uh, yeah, that's gonna snapshot. Oh yeah, let me talk about how much space it uses. We have five, eight terabyte hard drives. So 40 terabytes in each node. Okay. So four nodes, four 40s, there's 160 terabytes total. It's two replicas, so we get just around half of that as usable capacity, so it's about 80 terabytes. Let me talk about what I use. 22 terabytes in all of our data. That's uh, Chris's uh, video production data. Actually, Chris is our biggest data hog in the company. And amazing how much uh, data video takes. A whole bunch of it is things like our, uh, our database, uh, database backups, uh, small files, an awful lot of small just customer interaction files. 
uh, a, a huge number of them actually. Uh, that's what resides in that 22 terabytes. When we start snapshotting, uh, that 22 terabytes, there's extra allocated in that. Okay, so I talked about the set. Uh, 24 one-hour snapshots, um, four weeklies, and seven dailies rotating all the time. So it takes me from 22 terabytes up to 31 terabytes. Okay, so it's about nine terabytes on 22, so less than 50% of the space to, to uh, look after that data. Now, anybody who's familiar with snapshotting is gonna say yeah, the amount of space uh, allocated by snapshotting really depends on how your data changes. True, we're probably typical for any small, medium companies, data, and uh, we believe, and, and through our, our regular R-Sync, uh, incremental R-Sync uh, backups, that we're probably about 200 to 250 gigabytes per day of changed files. So you can put that together. So 200, 250 gigabytes of changed files. Okay. Uh, snapshotting, so nine terabytes total on top of 22. So snapshotting is incredibly inefficient. Um, yeah, so summary, uh, you got our backup system. It's simple, it's cost effective. The cost of that storage system compared to an interruption for a couple of days in our company is just night and day. It's just so much more cost effective. And uh, so I highly recommend snapshotting as a piece of your whole cybersecurity strategy. So, uh, so you know, in summary, basically where we are, our new data storage uh, system, as we thought about it, we said, uh, you know, critical thing, a high availability, high availability is critical to us. Hey, our, da our data is precious, but the time it takes to get it back and get all our people functional is precious as well. So having high availability, you know, to deal with all threats, not just crypto locker, but all threats, having high availability in the event of something happening and the ability to wind back uh, very quickly, almost instantly, not waiting hours and hours and hours to read through, through backup data sets is, I, I think, is a key part of any uh, you know, high availability, fast recovery uh, policy to deal with threats like cybersecurity. So Kim, uh, life would be a whole lot better now, wouldn't it? Your trauma level would be? Um, a thousand percent. It has changed my view in that I'm not going to wake up in, on the weekend anymore uh, cringing, writhing, wondering if I may have opened something that's going to shut us down and possibly, you know, lose all our data and shut the company down and yada yada. I feel so much better. So you're feeling good? Uh, High yes. five, dude. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, thanks for listening to this tech tip. Uh, please tune in again next week. And if you have any comments, love to hear from them. Thank you very much.